PFAS is a term for a group of chemicals that many Arizona residents are likely to hear more about in the coming years. We at ADEQ would like to provide you with a brief introduction of PFAS in Arizona so you can understand what PFAS are, what ADEQ is doing to address these chemicals in our environment, and what steps to take now to protect your health. First, it's important to understand some basic facts about PFAS. PER and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, are a large family of man-made chemicals that have been in use since the 1940s. PFAS have unique physical and chemical properties that make them very useful for a wide range of applications, most notably stain and water resistance. But these same properties can make them highly stable and resistant to degradation in the environment, earning them the nickname Forever Chemicals. Because the length of their carbon fluorine tail and the structure of their functional head can vary, thousands of unique PFAS molecules are possible. Some PFAS have been more commonly manufactured than others, including two of the most widely used and studied PFAS molecules, PFOA and PFOS. Scientific studies have shown that exposure to some PFAS may be linked to harmful health effects in humans and animals. Depending on how much PFAS someone is exposed to and for how long, certain PFAS can have potential harmful effects, for example, increasing the chance of getting some cancers, increasing cholesterol levels, and affecting reproductive health and child development. Because of their unique and beneficial properties, PFAS have been incorporated into many common consumer products, including carpets, furnishings, food packaging, cosmetics, clothing, cookware, and many others. In some cases, consumers can choose to limit their exposure to PFAS, for example, by avoiding products labeled as water or stain resistant, avoiding food in contact with grease-proof packaging, and avoiding personal care products with fluorinated ingredients on the label. Drinking PFAS contaminated water is another potential source of exposure, but one that for many is not easily avoided through personal choice alone. However, in most cases, exposure to contaminated drinking water can be eliminated through testing, regulation, and treatment, something we'll discuss more in just a bit. The life cycle of PFAS starts when they are first manufactured by industry. Although Arizona has not historically been home to any PFAS manufacturers, these chemicals can make their way to our state through the purchase of consumer products, the use of firefighting foams, and as raw materials used in the production of other products. People may be exposed directly from using these products, but as they are used or thrown away, they also enter our landfills and our wastewater treatment plants, and in turn can be released into the environment where they can accumulate and do not easily break down. From there, they may end up in our food or our drinking water. With PFAS so common in the world today, it's not surprising that we find these chemicals in our bodies as well. The CDC has measured PFAS in the U.S. population since 1999 and has found that PFAS are present in the blood of 99% of Americans. However, since 2002, the production and use of two of the most common PFAS, PFOA and PFOS, has declined and researchers have seen a corresponding decline in blood levels in the case of PFOS, by more than 85%. Therefore, despite their forever chemical nickname, we can see that reducing exposure to these chemicals can have a positive impact on the levels in our bodies. PFAS are not currently regulated at the national level or in Arizona. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency first released provisional PFAS health advisories in 2009, which defined advisory levels for PFOA and PFOS. Since that time, the advisory levels have been revised lower, first in 2016 and again in 2022, and were expanded to include additional compounds, PFBS and Gen X chemicals. Health advisories are not legally enforceable. They identify the concentration of a contaminant in drinking water at which adverse health effects are not anticipated to occur over a lifetime. In March 2023, EPA took the next step, after many years of study and recent research, EPA proposed a national primary drinking water regulation. The proposed regulation would create a maximum contaminant level, or MCL, for six common PFAS. An MCL is the maximum concentration of a contaminant allowed in drinking water that can be delivered by a public water system. 
EPA has proposed to regulate PFOA and PFOS at a level of 4 parts per trillion, while four other PFAS are proposed to be regulated as a mixture using a standard calculation called a hazard index. These proposed MCLs were developed by EPA to account for chronic exposures to low levels of PFAS over time. At concentrations typically found in drinking water, they are not dangerous in the same way as acute water contaminants like E. coli, which may be dangerous if consumed even once. It may be helpful to understand the unit of measure that's being used by EPA for the proposed regulation. One part per trillion is equivalent to a single drop of water in 20 Olympic-sized swimming pools. So this hopefully gives you an idea of just how small these numbers really are, and also how cautious EPA is being about the long-term risks associated with exposure to PFAS in our drinking water. ADEQ is closely following PFAS developments at the federal level, and the EPA has developed a roadmap that lays out their commitment to take specific actions. It's expected that EPA will finalize the proposed drinking water regulation within the next year, However, implementation of the final rule will occur three years later, giving states and water providers the time needed to address contamination. In addition to drinking water regulations, EPA has proposed designating certain PFAS as hazardous substances, which would allow the state and federal government to hold polluters accountable. And EPA has also proposed aquatic life standards to help protect wildlife in our streams and rivers. These are all just a few of the many federal PFAS developments that are expected over the next several years. So what is ADEQ doing about PFAS in Arizona? ADEQ is taking several steps to protect public health and help our state prepare for future EPA actions. Beginning in 2018, ADEQ conducted targeted screening efforts to understand the scope of PFAS impacts in Arizona. This testing included drinking water, groundwater, wastewater, and biosolids. In 2023, we began a comprehensive PFAS testing program to make sure that all of Arizona's regulated drinking water systems are sampled for PFAS in advance of federal regulations. If PFAS are detected, we can begin working right away with affected water providers to collect more data, find solutions, and identify funding to reduce exposure to PFAS. We'll have more details on this important program in just a moment. While we're actively working to protect drinking water, we're also trying to identify the most effective ways to prevent more PFAS from entering our environment. ADEQ recently piloted a program to help Arizona fire departments stop their use of PFAS-containing aqueous film-forming foams, known as AFFF. The program was allocated $395,000 during fiscal year 2023, which allowed us to take back and replace foam from over 50 fire stations, removing over 9,000 gallons of PFAS-containing foam from being used. We had 275 gallons that we no longer were utilizing because of the risk. And a truck easily pulled up, loaded it, and unloaded that F500 that we'll now be able to distribute to our trucks. Being involved in this program was so essential and critical for us to get rid of these chemicals. As mentioned earlier, ADEQ is currently engaged in a comprehensive statewide effort to ensure that all regulated water systems are tested for PFAS. EPA is currently requiring that systems serving 3,300 customers or more sample their drinking water for PFAS. However, in the state of Arizona, the majority of systems serve fewer than 3,300 people and will not be sampled under the EPA program. Therefore, ADEQ has committed to using $3 million of Federal Safe Drinking Water Act funds to sample these small water systems and help ensure that all regulated water systems in Arizona will be tested. Results are generally provided to water systems within two to four weeks of sampling and are posted to the ADEQ website. If PFAS are detected, ADEQ provides the system with a PFAS toolkit, specially developed to help water systems meet the challenges this may cause. The toolkit includes information on funding, customer communication, and potential next steps. Systems are asked to follow EPA recommendations to inform their customers of the results. Our program to test small drinking water systems has a number of benefits for the systems and their customers. First, it provides PFAS sampling to systems at no charge, potentially saving them thousands of dollars. These systems can then be notified of PFAS detections much earlier than if they wait until they are required to sample under forthcoming federal regulations. 
For those systems with PFAS concentrations higher than the EPA's proposed limits, they can get a head start planning for expanded testing, evaluating potential solutions, and applying for federal funding if necessary. With many systems across the nation facing similar challenges, it's important that Arizona's drinking water providers begin planning to meet the new rules as soon as possible. So what can you do if PFAS is detected in your drinking water? If your water is confirmed to contain PFAS, in many cases action is not necessary immediately. You can choose to reduce your exposure as soon as possible by not using untreated water for activities like drinking, cooking, washing produce, brushing teeth, or preparing formula. However, it's generally safe to continue using untreated water for activities like washing dishes, showering, laundry, swimming, and watering your yard. If you have concerns about PFAS in your water, there are a number of at-home treatments available, such as activated carbon and reverse osmosis. You can check sources such as the NSF or your local filter installer for more information on effective treatment systems for your home. It should be noted that boiling water will not remove PFAS, and bottled water providers are not required to test for PFAS, so use caution if you choose to drink bottled water. PFAS can be a complicated topic, and this presentation is meant only as a brief introduction. If you'd like to learn more about PFAS in Arizona, please visit our My Community webpage. There you can find a map displaying the results of statewide PFAS screening and links to other helpful resources. If you'd like to talk with someone directly, we have staff available to speak with you and answer any questions you might have. Thank you for listening.